dear students now i'm going to start a new topic unit 3.1 introducing cloned genes to host cells so cloned genes so it may be a, a naked dna or else it may be the gene of interest uh, that is incorporated uh, into the vector or else recombinant dna so how we can able to send or transfer this dna into the host cell host cell may be any plant cells or animal cells or bacterial cells how the cells they don't take up as it is so we have to employ different methods to introduce our gene of interest or else the recombinant vector into the the host cells so today i am going to discuss only about electroporation so gene delivery is the process of introducing foreign genetic material such as dna or rna into the host cells gene delivery must reach the genome of host cell to induce gene expression so that it is it should be successful so our gene of interest uh, should be properly incorporated into the host cell host cell able to make copy of this uh, gene of interest or else host cell able to express this uh, whatever the gene of interest to uh, uh, the carrying uh, vector what we have transferred into the host cell okay the gene uh, gene transfer to the host cell can be brought by three methods basically physical biological and chemical methods these methods help to in introduce desired dna to host cells and desired effect can be brought in host cell so this is a cartoon you will see this host cell may be a plant cell or animal cell so because there is a nucleus you will see so we can send the naked dna or uh, uh, tag it to some particles or else uh, we can send this in a plasmid or a vector so vector carrying our gene of interest or else we can pack so how exactly lambda page vector so we can pack this in a uh, page uh, dna and uh, we can make uh, this uh, virus uh, infect this uh, thereby the gene of interest will be delivered into this cell so there are different methods so, though all these methods are they are classified into physical methods particle bombardment electroporation micro injection chemical method liposome mediated gene transfer calcium chloride mediated gene transfer biological method transformation and trans transduction so all these uh, methods uh, are useful in uh, uh, successful gene transfer and uh, uh, you know depending on the requirement the scientists are using these uh, methods here so you are not studying all these method you are in your syllabus uh, electroporation particle bombardment method liposome mediated gene transfer and transformation and transduction totally five uh, uh, gene transfer technique or introducing cloned genes to the host cell so you are going to study today you, we are going to discuss electroporation so this is a cartoon how you can induce or uh, uh, sorry introduce uh, your gene of interest uh, through the liposome carrying this uh, G, our dna can be Uh, uh, make uh, uh, the cells to absorb or else directly dna can be delivered to the cells with the help of micro injection not in a, this one it's a micro injection just this is a cartoon you know so this is a tissue injection then uh, we can introduce uh, with the help of with the uh, um, um, make the the virus non virulent this not to causing disease and uh, in a, so only we pack that and it will infect the cell and deliver our d gene of interest into the the cells we want to bring some genetic change so this is a particle bombardment method so it is like a gun so we can load our uh, um, you know the vector carrying our gene of interest and it can be bombarded on the cells and uh, so the dna can be get into the so all these are different uh, methods okay so today i restrict myself to electroporation electroporation the use of high voltage or electric shock to introduce dna into host cells it can be used with the most cells and brings a high frequency of stable uh, transformation 
So, when the cells given uh, uh, electric uh, sudden electric shock there is a you will you will find you know there will be small holes going to form on the uh, you know the plasma membrane or else uh, uh, a lipoprotein membrane. So, through that holes uh, the gene of interest or the the uh, uh, vector carrying our gene of interest can be get into the, the cell. So, this is what called electroporation. So, this is the technique was first uh, performed by Wong and Newman uh, using fibroblast cells in 1982. So, this is a very popular method especially in, in uh, uh, transformation or else uh, uh, you know uh, introducing gene of interest to the plant cells. This method is based on use of short electrical impulses. So, it is a, a short uh, duration it is in terms of microseconds or milliseconds the cells will be given with the shock. If it is given longer duration the cells cannot revive the cells will, uh, uh, will become dead. So, that is why it is a very short period electric impulses to increase the permeability of the plasma membrane. So, that the desired gene of interest or DNA or vectors can be easily inserted into the cells and also to the nucleus. It is not only causing uh, the holes on the plasma membrane even in the nuclear membrane. So, that our gene of interest can pass through the plasma membrane also to the uh, through the nuclear membrane and into the nucleus to bring desired effect. So, the electrodes are placed in cell suspension containing recombinant vectors. So, for example, these are the the, uh, the test tube carrying uh, you know the uh, host cells. So, now we, we put uh, our uh, gene of interest uh, uh, carrying vectors. These vectors may be anything what you have studied cloning vectors they are carrying our gene when we incubate not with one cell. So, many host cells and many uh, recombinant vectors. So, this uh, a test tube uh, given with the mild electric shock for a very short duration. So, that uh, causes uh, the plasma holes in the plasma membrane. So, that uh, the vector carrying uh, our gene of interest get into this, the, uh, the bacterium. So, this is what you know the, the uh, uh, you know the electroporation. So, in this uh, you know the animation you will be able to see here. So, how exactly a mild shock will create holes here right. So, this uh, through these holes uh, the our uh, the vector carrying gene of interest get into the this is a bacterial cell. So, this is uh, um, during electroporation high voltage electric field results in their temporary breakdown and formation of pores in the plasma membrane of cells. So, it is a large enough to allow micromolecules like DNA plasmids uh, get into the, the uh, cytoplasm or get into the cell. When pores are open DNA can enter the cell and also to the nucleus not only on the plasma membrane it also make pores on the nuclear membrane. So, it can also enter the nucleus. After electroporation cells are allowed to recover from the shock and transformed uh, these uh, cells the cells so those are carrying our gene of interest they are called transformed cells are isolated with the help of marker G. you know that how exactly they can be selected with the help of marker like uh, uh, amphicillin resistant gene or tetracycline resistant gene or lag Z. So, so many methods we can use marker gene or reporter gene and we can select this uh, bacterial colony they are carrying our gene of interest. Remember the transformation is I mean uh, the gene transfer is not 100 percent out of uh, 100 cells 10 to 20 cells they get to trans, uh, you know uh, receive our gene of interest rest of the cells uh, uh, you know they are not uh, undergone transformation they have to be selected you know. So, all this you know that. So, electroporation pulse is generated by discharging capacitor in a specially designed electroporation chamber or gene pulser it is called. So, it is uh, just nothing but you can see these are the culture plates they are carrying the cells and uh, you will find our uh, gene of interest carrying uh, the plasmid DNA carrying our gene of interest. So, this uh, uh, you know they are uh, you know provide this uh, cultured host cells. So, they are uh, electric uh, electrodes. So, these uh, this is how, how exactly the setup you will see in the electroporation chamber 
or gene pulsar there are two types of electroporation system high voltage that is 1 to 1.5 kilo volts that is 1000 to 1500 kilo volts sorry 1500 volts for 10 microseconds remember so this is a, a short pulse approach then the low voltage uh, long pulse up approach where you can see 350 volts so it is almost uh, uh, one third of this uh, uh, you know the intensity so it is for uh, some milliseconds the cells are exposed this is called long pulse method solution of vectors or dna gene of interest are also directly mixed with the recipient cell suspension so this is how exactly these are the culture plates with the carrying our G, uh, the recombinant DNA, so or is uh, the plasmid DNA carrying our gene of interest. So the electrode is sus uh, you know these are the suspended here. A mild electric shock is given, which stimulates the cells to accept foreign DNA. That is so uh, you have seen how exactly the cells uh, there is a hole will form in the the plasma membrane. So what are the application of this uh, electroporation? electroporation of mammalian cell will take less than an hour whereas electroporation in plant cells requires more than 6 hour to prepare the protoplast and 1 hour for actual electroporation process. You know the difference between plant cells and the animal cells. Animal cells without cell wall whereas plant cells we have to remove cell wall to uh, uh, you know expose the cells to electroporation process. So, that is what you can see protoplast preparation that takes longer duration than actual process of electroporation. Elect whole electroporation process will be completed within an hour. It is an efficient method of gene transfer to the cells with low cell toxicity. We are not using any uh, toxic materials or chemicals here. So, it is a low toxicity and which will bring successful gene transfer. So, that is in the case of bacteria, yeast, plant cells and mammalian cells. Electroporation has now been shown uh, effective at delivering plasmid DNA in vivo is a res in variety of tissue types. So, it can be vector carrying gene of interest can be delivered you can see here. So, the these are the vector carrying gene of interest this is the host cell. So, there is a they are incubated together then electric shock or electric pulse. So, now all these uh, uh, recombinant uh, uh, vectors are now inside the cell because of pores formed on the plasma membrane. So, electroporation gene transfer is in uh, 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 the widely used in the preparation of genetically modified organisms or you know transgenic plants and transgenic animals preparation of transgenic plants and transgenic animals. Among plants electroporation found efficient in tobacco, petunia, maize, rice, wheat and sorghum. So, uh, you can see the, the different uh, uh, you know the varieties of uh, uh, genetically modified plant uh, uh, species or plant uh, strains are developed using this method. Electroporation method is very efficient in uh, permeating DNA into the animal cells, plant protoplast and bacterial cells. Electroporation increase the efficiency of transformation and transfection in bacterial cells. Transformation means introducing gene of interest to the bacterial cells. Transfection is introducing gene of interest to the, the eukaryotic cells or mammalian cells. Electroporation along with selectable marker useful in transient expression of molecular construct. So, we want to see a, a, a temporary uh, you know the changes that occur in the, the cell due to the expression of a particular gene we can use this method. So, this is what you can see the immature embryos of maize through electroporation. So, this uh, uh, you know uh, we can introduce a gene of interest then embryo going to form a callus and we can uh, get a lot of uh, plantlets uh, transgenic plants. Similarly, the pollen when uh, exposed to electroporation it will take up a gene of interest and then pollinate the flowers and that results into the transgenic plants. So, these are the method how we can what are the disadvantage from this. So, because this is not a full proof method. So, it is not uh, the uh, you know the uh, uh, transformation efficiency is not 100 percent and also 
there are some disadvantage. You can see in plant pro, uh, protoplast electroporation the frequency of stable transformation is one self it is one percent in the case of plants. So, it is uh, prepare, preparing the protoplast then electroporation. So, out of 100 one cell get uh, transformed a high mortality rate 25 to 50 percent survival requires a protoplast regeneration which is difficult uh, after electroporation the cells will be get shocked so many times and they cannot revive you know that is the problem with this technique. And uh, uh, the cell damage may occur because you will find there is a in the plasma membrane you have studied fluid mosaic model. So, holes are formed here. So, through, through, through this uh, these holes may get sealed up or else it may take longer time to seal up. So, in that process you can see uh, so many uh, you know molecules get into and make the cell burst or the cell will die. So, these are the cell damage may occur electric pulses a little long length make large pores on the plasma membrane sometimes it fails to close. So, these are all the problems with this technique. So, it is a non-specific transfer may bring ionic imbalance and cell death. So, this is how the electroporation is not the only method for a gene transfer there are other methods are developed. So, in the next video I am going to discuss another method of uh, introducing cloned genes into the host cell. So, see how exactly the zebra fish so colorful uh, due to the gene transfer we can you know uh, make uh, uh, aquarium very colorful. Thank you.